Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to come forward to present contracts L1 through L7. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Would you like me to start? Please. Okay, the first item is MWE 845-14 database resource. This is a contract modification to provide for the continued use of education, educational database resource PebbleGo and PebbleGo Next for grades pre-K through five. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $600,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1,434,400 with one vendor approved by the board in March 2014. Board members, are there any questions? Ms. Rowe? So this has been through curriculum committee? Uh, yes, it was, it's been twice, once in March of 2014 when the contract was initially awarded and again in August 2019. Okay, thank you. No? Pardon me one. Thank you. And one point of order, we are um, discussing contracts L1 through L8. I misspoke and addressed them as L1 through L7. So okay. there are eight contracts Correct. being presented. Thank you, Ms. Gover. Okay. Hearing no further questions, I believe we're ready okay. for L2. The next item, JMI 606-18, video production equipment and associated services. This is also a contract modification to provide for the continued purchase of video production equipment and associated services for the Department of Innovative Learning and Information Technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2.5 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3.5 million, with one, of, one awarded vendor approved by the board in December 2017. Okay. And as I understand, this is to expand um, production capability to schools that currently do not have it. And Good some which, which need to be replaced uh, or upgraded. But there are a list of schools uh, that, go, that went into calculating this number. Sure. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. There are, there are 21 elementary schools that currently don't have an elementary TV studio. So those are our priorities. And then um, there has to be uh, constant updates maintained with the rest of the uh, the rest of the equipment. So, for example, there's in the neighborhood of just under 50 schools, middle, high, and elementary, who have older TriCasters, um, which is the equipment that sort of uh, it's the heart of the TV studio that operates the equipment. So, we look for the funding when it's available to replace those TriCasters as well. Okay. Would you happen to have the breakdown between those that do not have a studio and those that require updates in terms of spending authority being requested? I, I don't. I can tell you a new elementary studio is anywhere between ten and twelve thousand dollars. Okay. And does this authority cover the twenty-one schools that currently do not have a studio? Yes, it would. Okay. And those are scheduled to have studios within the three years that this authority were to cover. Are yes. Those? Yes, it would. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those projects are on schedule to be complete within the three years. We we've actually been ahead of our schedule with ensuring that our elementary. Um, schools have TV studios, so any new construction is included in this as well. Um, and then the existing schools that don't have studios would be our absolute priority. Okay, so just to make, make sure I'm understanding, mm -hmm. so the end date for this authority is um, calendar year end 2022. So by calendar year end 2022, all schools will have studios. Yes. For the 3.5 or under 
um, authority, million authority, if we, the board approves this. That's correct. That is okay. Thank you. And can you expand upon what is um, necessitated by the updates? You mentioned the old Telecaster equipment in terms of yeah, there's, there's why three, there's a need to sure there's two that. there's two pieces to that. Um, one is the TriCaster updates. So. Uh, it, it's basically the heart of those TV studios um, that distributes the signals to the different cameras that the students have the ability to operate. So when that TriCaster, um, the TriCaster can get old and then it needs to be replaced and updated. So we have about 40, I think it's 46 schools that need to go through that process. The, there's also a whole series of schools that are still running Windows 7 in their studio. Those also need to go through the process of at least updating the operating system. Some need the TriCaster and the operating system. So this spending authority would allow us to ensure that um, we continue the process of ensuring that the studios get updated so they can provide the services necessary in the building so students can run the morning announcements, so they can record for classroom use. And is that need based on the fact that Windows 7 is no longer supported, or Correct. are we determining need based on some other reason? I'm pretty sure it's because it's not supported, but it... Jim, do you, is there another specific reason? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, with the TriCaster system, it, they, it's actually an entire PC encapsulated uh, with uh, some specialized cards in the back. And the operating system uh, from the TriCaster um, vendor is a closed system, so anything that we do to that, the actual software will throw errors up that says, oh, you've installed something that didn't come in this by default. So from a, a network security standpoint, Windows 7 is uh, far out of date for the ability to patch for certain um, software vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So it's causing on our network a concern around having far out of date software. So these Windows 10 upgrades on the TriCaster are um, kind of precipitated by the fact that it's a closed system, so we can't just simply go and take an existing one and upgrade it to a new version of Windows without it throwing a lot of errors at us and basically rendering it non-functional. Is but that how it, Yes, it does. But these systems, even though they're on our network, they're not open to <clears throat> outside networks, so they wouldn't pose a security <clears throat> risk to our network no. should we not update. Well, they also don't have web browsers on them. Uh, the, uh, the other uh, side to this is that uh, the newer TriCasters are coming in with digital uh, with digital capabilities, the uh, ability to ingest and export digital uh, sources, and uh, many of the upgrades that uh, Mr. Embrielli has been speaking about are analog systems. So we're drawing a different type of video source back into it. Okay. What I'm what I'm getting at is, what is the risk if there is a risk to waiting to update these 50 or so um, schools that require the updates? Well, I mean, in, in, in any in any. Um, in any system where we've plugged on a device up to our network, internal or not, um, it's that kind of herd immunization that we would think about where if everybody is up to spec, then it's a, a better immunization than simply having a couple that are out. So these, these are always going to pose a security risk for us. They're always going to show up on our internal audit scans as far as a system that is not within compliance for its uh, latest patches. So um, I, I can't tell you that it's, it's no risk. Uh, Ms. Hen, but I can tell you that it, it keeps it keeps us on our list. So we we think about it a little bit. Okay, sure. And do we have the the numbers? I know I asked this, and you gave me the cost of the the new studios at ten to twelve thousand per. Do we know of the two and a half million that's being requested? What that breakdown is for new versus upgrade? What's the bottom line versus this this spending authority? If the board were to decide, we want all of our schools to have studios, we want to hold off on upgrading those that have studios. What is that if we wanted to modify this authority and say we're we're going to? I, I don't have the breakdown. In, what is that breakdown? I don't have the breakdown for the cost of the tri, right with me, I do not have the breakdown for the cost of the TriCasters or for the cost of the Windows 7 upgrade by itself. I can see if I can obtain that. Um, I, what I can tell you is the spending authority covers the new studios and all of the upgrades necessary. Okay. So I'd, it was for everything. I'd like to see that breakdown of it broken out by what what it would cost for our new schools, including new construction, of course, and those schools without it, as well as what the upgrades would be. Okay. Um, board members, any other questions? 
about the no okay thank you Okay, next item is MBU 503-20, Flight Simulator Equipment and Supplies. This is a new contract to provide instructional materials, equipment, software, professional development, and technical uh, support for career and technology education programs of study in avi aviation technology and unmanned systems related programs requiring a flight simulator. Approval is requested for a four year, nine month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $250,000. Good afternoon, Michelle. Good afternoon. Board members, any questions? Ms. Rowe? You need to explain this to me. I what? Sure can. We're teaching kids to fly? Yes. In really? A, in a, <laughs> yes, in a sense. So this particular program, um, the aviation technology um, program, will ultimately result in students um, earning a license to man an unmanned vehicle or a drone pilot's license. So this equipment is a part of a four-core sequence in principles of aviation and aerospace that ultimately results in students earning both articulated credits through CCBC and the opportunity to sit for earning their drone pilot's license. So this equipment is a flight simulator for them to learn how to do that. So they, when they go through this program, they leave with some kind of certification? They will be eligible to sit for, they have to pass an exam, but yes. Okay. And how many students do we have participating in this? So um, it is, this is our first year we're starting the program. We have programs at Kenwood and at Hereford High School. Mm -hmm. At the last numbers, we had two sections at Kenwood, which was around 30 to 40 students. Mm -hmm. And we had three sections at Hereford, which was roughly 50 to 60. Um, there's some juggling, as you know, in the beginning of the year with schedules, but that was my most current numbers. So is this one flight simulator for all the programs? Or are we having multiple flight simulators? So that's a great question. There are um, different models. So our hope would be there's a desktop version, mm -hmm. which is around $8,000. So that would be used in like our intro level course. Um, and then um, each program would have at least one, if not two, of those desktop models. And then we would have one of the larger um, models, which is around $32,000. And that would exist in each program. OK, so we're talking about drones, basically. They are in a simulator. There are also drones as part of the program, but this is teaching them flight simulation where they experience actual flight simulation the same way you might for a typical pilot license. Mm -hmm. um, this is the beginning step of that to prepare them to sit so the curriculum lines up with the same um, exam that they would eventually take for a true pilot's license. So, okay. yes. That sounds like fun. It, it we sound, get to um, try it? I asked to be involved, invited to the ribbon cutting, so I'll make sure that you are invited. I want to do it. I will make sure you get it. Absolutely, Mr. McGillian. I told you at Curriculum Committee, I will definitely let you know. Thank you. Any other questions for members? No? Thank you, Ms. Shea. You're welcome. Next item is MBU 502-20, E-Rate Consulting Services. This is a new competitively bid contract for E-Rate Consulting Services for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a 10-month contract with the option for three additional one-year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $75,000. Questions, board members? Ms. Rowe? What exactly does E-Rate do precisely? What's the scope of this? So uh, the federal government collects taxes on our cell phone usage, landline usage, our cable access, our internet access, and they combine that into a uh, pot at the federal level that allows for an organization called USAC to distribute that money back to school systems and public libraries based on the free and reduced lunch count rate of the area in order to reimburse us for both uh, services that we may lease as well as networking equipment. So in general, um, a good number to use would be to say, if we outlay $1 for a service, E-rate will, in the next fiscal year, reimburse us a certain percentage. Uh, on average, in Baltimore County, it's around 60 cents. 
So this is a reimbursement process that the federal government utilizes in order to invest in infrastructure uh, in school systems and public libraries. Okay, so the, the consulting services do what exactly? Help us maximize those? So this, uh, the best analogy I have for this, Ms. Rowe, is that E-rate is like filling out your 1040 long form without having an accountant. So what we're trying to do is get a CPA in in order to maximize our returns, minimize our risk of audit, and make sure that all of our paperwork and our processes are filed so that we can maximize the amount that we get back, as well as decrease the internal stresses on our employees who are picking up this uh, task as a second duty is assigned. How much do we usually get back? Mm, we budget about $500,000 in reimbursement, but um, Last year, I want to say it was $2 million. Oh, all right. It's a little bit. It's worth some yeah. price, I guess. To uh, th this, is a, this is a pretty easy investment to maximize this uh, with the benefits far outweighing the, the price that we would outlay. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you. The next item is JMI 612-15. Tree pruning and removal and associated services. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for continued tree pruning and removal services for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $100,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $600,000 with three vendors approved by the board in December 2014. Board members, questions? I have one, and that's just um, curious as to why this is a one-year um, extension or bid on an annual well, basis. this um, is actually not an extension. It's, it's a modification. It's the original termination date uh, of five years, uh, but with the spending that has accrued <laughs> clo uh, 465000 reaching the limit of the prior approved authority and knowing that storm seasons are ahead of us, we wanted to make sure we had adequate authority to continue to use these three vendors and we'll uh, be rebidding this for next, you know, next year. I see, I was looking at the prior board yeah. approval date of, of August of last year, so it it appeared that this is the second, at least the second extension, or second increase. Yes, yeah, second increase. On the original, okay. Board members, other questions? No? Thank okay, you. the next item is MBU 500-20 elevator and chairlift inspections. This is a new competitively bid cooperative contract for the inspection of elevators and chairlifts for the Office of Facility Support Services. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with the option for four additional one-year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $35,000. This is a Baltimore County contract that we're using. Questions? Members? Okay. Hearing none. Okay. The next and final item. Uh, no, not final. Uh, seventh item. CWA 113 19, provision of privacy partition parts. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for the purchase of replacement parts for laboratory stall partitions for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $400,000. Okay. Board members, any questions? Mr. McMillian? I'm curious. I know I say that a lot. Uh, I've been in some bathrooms around, men's rooms around Baltimore County Public Schools where there's no partitions. Is that like a local school decision to do that? It, um, buildings are supposed to be in compliance with code 
and the codes at the time of construction of the building. So if the code at that time mm -hmm. allowed, it is, it is grandfathered. But if a school requests partition, then this type of contract is utilized to install partition. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none. Okay. okay. Now our last item, MBU 501-20, Supply and Servicing Portable Toilets. This is a new competitively bid contract for portable toilets and scheduled related services for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $200,000. Any questions, board members? No? Okay, that concludes our last item. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Thank you. I would like to separate item L2 for consideration. Um, board members, do I have a motion to recommend items L1 and L3 through L7 to the full board for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? All in favor? The motion carries. Okay, thank you. Um, Tracy, do I need a motion to recommend L2 without? Okay. Do I have a motion to um, move L2 to the full board without a recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? And that motion carries. Is there any further business? Ms. Ann, could I uh, just mention, I think you said L3 through L7. I'm sorry. And Thank we you. have an 8. Okay. Thank you very much. I will restate that my original motion. Um, board members, do I have a motion to recommend items L1 and L3 through L8 to the full board for approval? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? That motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Thank Sarris. you very much. And the motion to forward L2 without a recommendation also carried. Is there any further business? Hearing none, since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned.